Baltimore TV. I'm Bill from the BX. I'm here with my partner. My name is Sean from West Baltimore, born and raised. Hey, what's good? Hey, so tell us more about what you did throughout your military career coming out of West Baltimore. All right, so um, August 6, 2006, I listened to the United States Air Force. Um, I did six years, I did multiple tours and I overseas, Iraq and Afghanistan. I started my career out um, in Korea, then moved to Hickam Air Force Base, Hawaii, and finished off at uh, Buckley Air Force Base in Colorado. Okay, uh, okay, so in 2006, by this time we have been at war in Afghanistan and Iraq, and you just, so you joined the Air Force trying to duck the smoke. No, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> nah, because coming from West Baltimore, you was born in the smoke. I was born in the smoke. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Was, Still living in the smoke. Still <laughs> living in the smoke. For real, for real. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what did you do? As well, you said you was uh, in the Air Force as a military police. We called security force. I was military police. Um, okay. For the first three years, I did like law enforcement and security. Um, then the latter part of the career, I did canine handling. Which was a canine I had either a drug dog or a bomb dog. When I was in Hawaii, I had a bomb dog. And when I was in um, Colorado, I had a drug mm. dog. So going from Baltimore, it's a dog. Dog. Yeah, yeah, the, the bomb dog, the mm. drug dog. Yep. Drug dog. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> For those that don't know, that's that Baltimore accent. Uh, Shouts out to the wire. That's my introduction. <laughs> that's my introduction to Baltimore. You know, I moved here in 2007, and uh, I watched I watched The Wire actually while in Iraq. Mm -hmm. I watched the first two seasons. So, um, the McNulty and yeah, the McNulty era. The, uh, well, the docs kind of threw me. The docs, the docs up was the doc season was kind of eh. Mm -hmm. But uh, when they came back to the streets, I was with it. I was with all of it. Uh, special shout out, rest in peace to Michael K. Williams. Uh, Omar. Yeah, they took Omar. You think Marlo caught up with him? Nah. Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Dang, well, shout out to the brother Michael K. Williams, aka Omar. Um, so throughout your career, you was a uh, military police, and you came home after you you got out of the military. What year? Two thousand twelve. Two thousand twelve. Six, six years. Yeah. Six years. You did all those duty stations. Six years. That's what's up, man. Mm -hmm. And you came home to do what? Um, when I first came out, I uh, got a job with the Maryland Parole Commission. Mm. Um, sat there for probably about a year. I was actually in school and going to work at the same time, full time student. Okay. Um, and get my bachelor's degree in criminal justice. Nice. You know, military papers out for saying. GI Bill. GI Bill, man. <laughs> tell, I tell y'all, y'all out there not taking advantage of your GI Bill, you're missing free money. Absolutely. Free money. I even got my master's in my GI Bill. Sheesh. You got your master's degree? I got my master's degree. Master's in business administration. So you 5 0 with a master's degree. That's Absolutely. a waste. Not, 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 not a lot of people in law enforcement master's degrees. I know, but there's a lot of people in law enforcement with GEDs too. That's true. That's another part of law enforcement. That's why we be fucking up all the time. Some of them get promoted and they make it through the ranks. They that's a, that's a problem. They still <laughs> through. It, it depends. I mean, education is one thing and skill set as far as getting a job done. That's another. Mm -hmm. But um, I wish them all well, man. As far as the things you see here in Baltimore. When it comes to law enforcement, what kind of things would you like to see improve? The rapport between law enforcement and the community members. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest things that I've, I've seen that I can continuously see from adolescent children growing up is how law enforcement has steadily, fast steadily grown apart yeah. from the community and community members. You know, back in like the early 70s, 80s, you used to have police officers who would really call walk the beat. Absolutely. You know, you know, everybody knew who your community law enforcement person was. Absolutely. And the law enforcement person knew everybody where everybody else was. It's like the big brother in the neighborhood, you didn't have a neighborhood watch. You had Officer X, Y, and Z walking to be in the neighborhood. You know, when I was growing up, we had to call Pal, Police Athletic League. I remember the Police Athletic League. I used to get tickets to the Yankees game See? for free because I used to run with the, in the Police Athletic League. No one wanted to run the 400 meter. <laughs> It was that's a long run when you're ten years is. old, you know. What I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but I would pace it out. Mm -hmm. I would pace it out. I would, I would run right next. I get to I find the fastest person I knew was gonna win. And I just try to stay on their hip. <laughs> that last twenty yards, ah, smoke them. Come get it. Come get it. <laughs> next thing you know, I got my tickets in the nosebleeds, Yankee Stadium, <laughs> New Bronx. Um, mm -hmm. we've seen so many things here in Baltimore when it comes to law enforcement. The uh, consistent miscommunication between the community and and those who are set to uh, serve, serve and protect. For me, I don't look at it as the as the as the as police look to serve and protect. I look at it as police protect capitalism mm -hmm. 
in the states, military protect capitalism abroad. Absolutely. Uh, so you know, when you look at like the law enforcement here, you know, like again, because of lack of communication and lack of care, custody, dignity, and respect mm -hmm. from law enforcement officers going into our community. Our community is broken. Our law enforcement is broken. Our entire system is broken. Wow. So, in order to repair the system, we have to get people within our community to fix themselves. We have to get people within the law enforcement environment to fix themselves. People in our local, state, and national government to fix themselves. Wow. You know, one of the biggest things you I was taught when I was in um, undergrad school for my criminal justice was when the government lies to you, it's called politics. Mm. When you lie to the government, it's called a felony. Felony, absolutely. So that's the biggest difference. You know, one side of the ball game is untouchable way over here being us a community anything you do is being watched scoped and it's penalized to the heaviest hand in communities where people look like us we're over police absolutely so there's a whole lot of penalties involved one of the officers who i feel like was trying to bridge that gap there's a a gentleman he's an army reservist and i remember when he we and him worked in the same army reserve unit and um he was telling me how he was gonna he wasn't gonna be in the reserves anymore once he made detective. Mm -hmm. His name was uh, Officer Sean Souter. Mm -hmm. um, you may have heard his name in the news. You may have heard about him. He was uh, a Baltimore police officer who, uh, at the time, he was shot and killed by an assailant uh, or someone he was in pursuit of. And then uh, all types of results came around and they were like, no, he was shot with his own service weapon. Service weapon and shot in the back of the head at an angle of which you can't do it yourself. Absolutely correct. So, um, even upon investigation, 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 this with it was so much wasted resources and money mm -hmm. on trying to cover up a murder. A murder. Mm -hmm. Not a suicide. Not a suicide. A murder. But to this day, his family is held without life insurance benefits because his murder was ruled a suicide. Sean Souter was due to testify against the Baltimore Police Department mm -hmm. for wrongdoings and in this practice, and he um, was murdered the day before. The very, the day, the very day before, not like a week before or a month before, the very day before. And the crazy thing is that his partner that he went out with that day was not his normal partner. Oh, of course. It was somebody who just had to do this investigation for the past right here. Now, that's the most fucked up part about it. Man, so that's, 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 just, that's just sends out such a message, mm -hmm. not just to the people, because they're gonna with the people you're gonna we're gonna get the media coverage of it, and people will still believe the news. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. That's crazy to me. <laughs> we still got <have> people <laughs> who every day watch uh, all the news outlets, mm -hmm. not just Fox who speaks out against black people more often than not, but I mean CNN, MSNBC, mm -hmm. all of them. People still believe the news and. Um, they're gonna get a certain take on things. Their but perspective. They're gonna get their perspective, mm -hmm. absolutely. But when you are, um, when you wear, put the uniform on every day, mm -hmm. and you put the uniform on every day with good intentions, you wanna help your community. Mm -hmm. You see things like that. So, you know, for my job I have now as a probation and parole agent for the state of Maryland, a lot of things that we are put in place to do is to be that bridging gap between police officers and the court system and we call them now clients mm. before you call subjects okay you know then they came out with oh well we shouldn't title them as subjects we should title them as clients because it's That's a little bit more respectful PC type respectable type okay okay so now you know we deal with these clients in the community where they already set for bail yeah Except for failing from the court system, from not being able to afford, mm -hmm. from not being able to get so, certain social services, from not being able to get. Um, so have your neighborhoods over policed. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you don't have the resources to be defended in court Correct. effectively. Correct. Man, it's a. Uh, so, what, the, what, the, what programs do y'all have in, uh, on the state side? Because obviously in Baltimore, and a lot of times we deal with the Baltimore city stuff. On the state side, what programs do y'all have in place to uh, So even though we were the state, the highest caseload of supervision is in Baltimore City. Okay. So you have, in Baltimore City alone, you have about six to seven probation offices in the city. Mm -hmm. 
where in other counties or other municipalities throughout the state, like Howard County or Moe County or PG County, you go out to Frederick County, all the other, other counties may have two, three at mm. max. And they're inside of a courthouse. But in the city, we have six, seven, double. But the population may, may not necessarily, for those that don't know, Baltimore City is not super heavily populated. It's not. In comparison, so there's, there's probably those numbers don't reflect accurately. Correct. The things that Baltimore County does have, though, is an abundance of black and brown people. Correct. Which will lead to the reason why. Look, people, we're not telling y'all nothing we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we're not telling y'all nothing that y'all don't know. Mm -hmm. But, um, man, so, so that we can cap this and let's uh, try to put a, a shining light on it, if you will. Y'all have the, the hug of thug. Maybe tell me about the hug of thug, uh, mm -hmm. latest and greatest as far as um, uh, programs. How's that How's that working out? So the hug of thug was uh, a name that was made up by somebody agency and it kind of went towards what they call the JRA, which stands for the Justice Reform Act. Okay. And within the Justice Reform Act, it's a act that was enacted by about four years ago now mm. where it allowed our clients, probationers, as well as parolees, to have some sort of a better opportunity to be successful, be more productive members in society. Okay. So there are certain programs or grant funding programs that were given to you by the state to spread out through all municipalities, whether, like I said, whether it's Montgomery County, whether it's Frederick County, whether it's Cumberland, whether it's Baltimore City, Baltimore County, PG County, Charles County, whatever case may be. They incorporated these funding grant programs of reentry for clients who are basically the probation or parole okay. and it gives them incentives or certain businesses or companies incentives to hire you know people of, okay. of color or criminal justice background of okay. Okay. probation and parole kind of like you know where they have the whole veteran thing you know if you hire a veteran you get a certain amount of tax taken right. off correct okay. Okay. So it's the same kind of concept they have that for people who are who are currently on probation or parole or have had certain amount of years outside of their expiration of probation or parole. So the whole hug of them, like, oh, come here, let's hug you, you know, we're here for you, we're your therapist, like the Barney aspect of it. Okay. So, yeah. So, I mean, I think they have certain tools that can help, but again, you know, it also falls back on not just the probationers and the parolees, but also us holding our own people accountable for their actions. Absolutely. Hold our own people accountable. accountable. Hold our own people accountable for their actions, but also those who are put in position to serve and protect. Mm -hmm. I would wish and hope that moving forward, we find a better name for X, for people who have served time and the correct. You know, <laughs> the the. I guess I could see how the play on the words, but mm -hmm. I know if I had did something and I had to serve the time because I took a plea deal. Mm -hmm. Even though I knew I was innocent, even mm -hmm. though the people in the courtroom knew I was innocent, to be labeled a, a felon okay. or a thug <laughs> the rest mm -hmm. of my life is to come some kind of way with me. Mm -hmm. And I thank God every day mm -hmm. that, you know, growing up in the Bronx, I was able to avo uh, avoid the pitfalls mm -hmm. and find a way out of it. I thank God that you was able to avoid the pitfalls, mm -hmm. find a way out of it, find your own position within the system, mm -hmm. and now using that position to, to help those, to spread the knowledge and, uh, you know, hopefully now we have a young listener out there who avoids those uh same pitfalls and mm -hmm. on their journey. Yep. Brother Rashad, appreciate you stopping through. So for the Sunday. So for Sunday. Hey. Sunday <laughs> fun day. Sunday fun day. <laughs> this again, this is Out4 TV. I'm Bill from the BX. Rashad from West Baltimore. Y'all take it easy. <laughs>